In 1981, Billy Martin led the Oakland A's to a divisional championship. They played the Bronx Bombers and were swept in three. Billy is back, managing in pinstripes for a fifth time. It was Ricky Henderson who ran the A's offense under Martin and is stealing the show on the base paths in the Bronx. But Oakland now has a new look, a look of power and muscle. Jose Canseco and Mark McGuire, the dynamic duo. And in New York, controversial Dave Winfield has everybody jumping on and off the field with his monumental blasts. Tonight, in what could be a preview of the American League Championship Series, the Yankees take on the A's on ABC's Monday Night Baseball. For the third consecutive day, it's a sellout at the Oakland Coliseum as tonight the Oakland A's open a three-game series with the New York Yankees. It's the premiere of ABC's Monday Night Baseball. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender. Certainly glad you were able to be with us on the extended weekend as we are preaching tonight the teams that have the two best records in baseball. The A's have won five in a row, the Yankees seven of their last eight. This quite frankly could be a preview of the American League Championship Series. The last time that happened was in 1981 when Billy Martin was the manager of the Oakland A's and Dave Winfield is in his first year with the New York Yankees. Tonight also marks the debut of a guy who is two times the most valuable player in the National League, who was able to steal over 700 bases, hit more home runs than any second baseman in history, a future Hall of Famer, Joe Morgan and Joe, glad to have you with us. Right. Thank you very much, Gary. It's good to be here, and we have a great matchup for our first telecast. This is an explosive Oakland team. They have been able to do so many things well. A lot of people are seeing uh, just how good is this Oakland A's team. Well, a lot of people forget that last year the Oakland A's scored a lot of runs, but it was their pitching staff that let them down, down the stretch. This year they've added Bob Welch to go along with Dave Stewart, and Dennis Eckersley has done a great job coming out of the bullpen, and that's why they're leading the Western Division. Joe, they are 20 games over 500, nine-game lead of the American League West. That's the biggest lead at the Memorial Day break. Can anybody catch these <laughs> Oakland A's? I don't think anyone can catch them, but if the A's do not play over 500 baseball, they can fall back to the pack, and I think that's the only way that it'll be a race in the West. You know, we mentioned the fact that these two teams are explosive. They mirror each other so many ways. I think what's really impressive is Oakland's improved their pitching, and so is this New York Yankee team. Well, the Yankees, like the A's, went out and got some help on their pitching staff. John Candelari has already won seven games for them. Rich Dotson has done a great job, and Al Leiter's done a great job, you know, in his second year. Well, they mirror each other in some ways, but in one way they don't, and that's the off-the-field activity. Earlier this week, Lou Pinella resigned as general manager of the Yankees. There's some talk that two volatile people, Martin and Pinella, did get along. Pinella explains his position, and then Billy Martin. Anytime uh, you get a general manager uh, and a manager together, uh, uh, yeah, there's going to be disagreements. But uh, no, that's not the reason I'm leaving here at all. Uh, I uh, feel that uh, this is where I belong in the, in the baseball end of it. Uh, when I took this job uh, uh, back in October, uh, I told Mr. Steinbrenner, I, I just don't know how quickly I'll be able to acclimate myself to a, an office situation, uh, uh, if at all. Words about the circumstance in the last couple of days. Well, Joe, I, I was kind of surprised that Lou left, but uh, knowing Lou after being on the field and after being in the front office every day like he has to be, and all the hours he puts in up there, that, I, I, something I wouldn't want to do either. So I can understand why Lou left. Uh, it's nothing personal, I'm sure, because uh, Lou is a real smart baseball man, and I'm sure he'll come back either as a manager or have another general manager's job where he can have a little more freedom. But uh, as far as you've been reading about in the paper about Lou and I not liking each other, that's ridiculous. But, you know, there's a lot of things that are in the paper. If I was in front of a truck and it ran over me, I'd get blamed because the truck hit me. So I just don't pay any attention to the papers. I don't read it. So two right-handers, Bob Welch going for the A's. He's won seven in a row. Richard Dobson, 
seeking his 100th career win. The A's and Yankees will be back for the starting lineup for this game between the two teams with the best record in baseball. Let's take a look now at the starting lineup for the New York Yankees. Henderson leading the major leagues in solo bases the leadoff. Bobby Meacham will be starting at second place in place of the injured Willie Randolph and Washington batting third in center field. Gary, you can't replace a Don Mattingly, but Cordell Washington does a good job, and he's also backed up by Jack Clark. Clark with nine home runs, the D.H. Pal Larulo, the third baseman. He'll be followed by Dave Winfield, batting in the sixth position. He had a magnificent home run last night. Gary Ward at first base. Of course, with Don Mattingly on the 15-day disabled list. Santana will be the shortstop, and Joel Skinner will be the catcher for the Yankees. Defensively, let's look at the A's, Joe. Well, Walt Weiss is the shortstop. He's a rookie, and he's on the spot because anytime you're a rookie on a pennant contender, you're going to have a problem. But the key to the Oakland defense is Carney Lansford. A lot of people felt that slick fielding Carney Lansford should have won a gold glove last year. He makes all the plays at third base, and this year he's been a great steadying influence on the rookie wide. And so he'll have an outstanding defense behind him, he being Bob Welch. Welch looking for his eighth win in a row. He beat the Yankees on May 20th, went eight innings, gave up three hits, one run, and struck out four. Well, the former Dodger, the right-hander, as Ricky Henderson will come up. But, of course, there's a little bit of drama every time Henderson comes into the game. <laughs> he has 34 leadoff home runs. That's one off of the Major League record. Yeah, Bobby Bonds had a lot of home runs, and his son Barry Bonds is doing the same for Pittsburgh. So let's see if Henderson can tie that mark as he leads things up and takes the strike on the outside corner. I think we'll see a lot of fastballs from Bob Welch on the outside corner to these Yankee hitters. He does not want to get the ball inside and give him an opportunity, opportunity to, to jerk the ball. Arnie Lanford, you see him on the edge of the infield grass. I think he's playing in there more for a protection of, of himself than Ricky Henderson bunting because Ricky does not bunt very much, but he hits a lot of choppers, and he wants to be able to cut the ball off in the hole if it's chopped because Weiss wouldn't have a chance to throw Ricky Henderson out. One ball, one strike. It's going to be grounded to short. Weiss comes up with it. To Mark McGuire, who's one up and one down. Let's get an inside look on Bob Welch, the guy who should know him pretty well as Jack Clark, who batted against him when he was with the Cardinals, and, of course, Welch pitching for the Dodgers. Here's what Jack had to say. for fastballs at all time and he pretty much pitches you middle out so you can't really try to hit home runs off him you have to try to get a bunch of base hits to generate runs and hopefully he'll make a mistake and and when you get that one pitch hopefully you won't miss it because you might not see it again so bob welch has the first man down and bobby meacham is up meacham coming in here hitting 226 of course pressed into service when willie randolph suffered that hamstring problem in the series against the Seattle Mariners. Meacham has played third, short, and starting today at second base for the skipper, Billy Martin. Slice foul. One of the things about Meacham is that he has played shortstop on the left side of the field most of the time. When you have to take the throw coming across the bag on a double play, it could present problems for the Yankees today if they have to make a tough double play in the late inning. Just a gorgeous day for baseball. Yesterday it was treacherous out here. It was so windy. Some wind swirling today, but not anything close to yesterday. There's a call strike two, and the count goes to one ball, two strikes. I think there we're seeing something different from Bob Welch. Normally Bob Welch moves the, moves the fastball inside and outside. Now I see him staying mostly outside to these Yankee hitters so far, the first two hitters. He is 8-2 record. Seven wins in a row, just misses, and the count goes to two and two. Up next, Claudel Washington. The Yankees on their longest road trip of the year. Seventh game and 12. There's Washington. Claudel, of course, growing up in this area and signed as an 18-year-old by Charlie Finley. Pop to short right. That's going to be a tough field to play this early in the day. Conseco's over. He makes the catch. He's looking up into that sun, and I would think right now, Joe, that's going to be a big problem. That's a tough sun field right now. It probably reminds of Yankee Stadium, but... It's a tough sun field. You have to pick up the ball very quickly because you have a lot of white shirts behind you, and then it goes up into the sun. It's going to be tough. 
team. There you see Canseco fighting it all the way, but he played out there enough, so he's made the adjustment. Amazing thing about him, Joe, he has not committed an error this year playing in right field after moving over from left. Well, that is unusual, especially you have a different angle the ball travels at when you play right field. Here's Claudel. You see the numbers on Washington. He takes the strike. Claudel this year has come in to pinch hit twice and hit home runs. As we mentioned, he was signed by Charlie Finley. Coming out of this Oakland area, owls it back, and the count goes to two strikes. He's had some very good years. Two times he's made all-star appearances, once in the National League and once in the American League. Played on six different teams. The skipper, he's a little late getting the lineups to us today. <laughs> Grounded foul. Well, he was trying to decide whether Willie Randolph was going to play or not, and Willie tested his hamstring, and he felt like he should give himself a couple more days. Waddell, Washington. Hit 308 for these days back to 1975, and that's still the club record at 40 stolen bases. That's a very good moment. 0-2 pitch. Rounded back towards second. Gallego coming up. To play. Got him. And so Bob Welch sets him down in order. We go now to the bottom of the first inning. Yankees do not score, and the A's coming to bat. Be a control pitcher. He's going to... Uh, mix up his fastball with his off-speed pitch as well and fought the ball well and uh, he's going to be battling you the whole game. So there he is, Dotson, as we mentioned, looking for his 100th career win. This will be his third attempt to get that. He's 5-1 and one on the year. Of course, pitched last year for the White Sox. There's Lansford, the leading hitter in the major. Javier will be in left field. Ken Seiko batting third. He'll be patrolling right field. The D.H. will be Dave Parker. Mark McGuire, who's not had a home run in 10 games, will be at first base. Ron Hassey, what a find he has been for the A's. Due to the injury to Terry Steinbach, he's done very well behind the plate. And here is the big surprise thus far for this ball club has been Henderson in center field. Gallego at second made a brilliant defensive play yesterday, and then Walt Weiss, the rookie at shortstop. Yesterday, Joe, was the first time he'd committed two errors in a ball game. Well, it was a, he had a couple of tough chances, and he just was not able to execute yesterday. But he has done a great job, you know, for these Oakland A's. Dotson, the right-hander, a control pitcher. This is 10th start, 11th appearance for the year. Last start was May 23rd in California. He went four and a third innings, giving up seven hits and two runs. Left the game with a score tied 2-2. Both the So Carney Lansford coming up. The leading hitter in the majors, hitting 396. He has a 15-game hitting streak. Well, one of the good things about Connie Lansford, he's a very aggressive hitter. When he walks to the plate, he goes up to hit. He's not looking for a walk. He walks up trying to get his pitch, and he attacks it immediately. He's a first-pitch swinger. He's a first-pitch fastball hitter, technically. But he can also handle all the pitches, the breaking ball, the off-speed pitches. Well, he's flirting with 400. He's been doing that all year long. Of course, the last guy to do that was Ted Williams in 1941. That's a long time ago. So that's, a, that's a tough job to do, though, hit 400. So Dotson starts him out. It's grounded up through the middle. Flag down. The throw, and it pulls the first baseman off the bag. It goes into the dugout area, and going to second base will be Lansford as... Santana really had no chance on that play. I don't know why he even threw the ball. Well, I think that comes from really Randolph not being out there. I think Randolph would have been yelling at him, don't throw the ball to first base. See, you go up the middle, and the second baseman's job here is to let him know how close the runner is. He should have been yelling all the way, no chance, no chance, and I think they would have saved the base. Well, that's the base hit and a throwing error, and that is his 81st hit for Lansford, and his average now is 399. <laughs> What a year he's having. Is that going to bring up now Stan Javier, the left fielder? Javier had a three-hit game yesterday, the sixth of the year. Good defensive outfielder, and of course the son of Julian Javier, the former Cardinal second baseman. So Lansford is second, nobody down, a hit and an error. The bottom of the first, no score. Dotson starts him off with a curveball, hit a Straightaway center field. Washington has it gauged all the way. Lansford tagging. He's coming to third, and they're going to get him. 
And Alvarola took it and won a throw from Clarnell Washington. Actually, Carney was undecided. He was sending to second base. He was looking at Jim Lefevre. They were both trying to decide whether they were going to go. And then he made up his mind to let him go. And Claudel Washington makes the throw right on the money, all the way in the air. And he's out by about five feet there, as you can see. Calarulio is waiting for him. Lansford has surprising speed, but you said it well, Joe. He really didn't get a good break off the bag at all. I think they were too undecided. They weren't sure. And it was actually too close to try this early in the ball game. So Palarula was there with the tag. Lansford's erased. There's two down and Canseco coming up. Jose takes the pitch outside. This guy is tied for first in home runs with Herbeck with those 12, hitting 286. Number one and runs scored. All strike one and one. Canseco this year, Joe, has really committed himself to being a complete player. And he's done a great job. He's now still faces, and he's always had a strong arm for the out from the outfield, but now he's starting to catch the ball better in the outfield. Pitch misses, and the count goes to two and one. They have changed the way he stands in there. He used to be moving around a lot. They've tried to anchor him in a little bit. Well, he used to hit from an open stance, meaning his left foot was almost facing third base. They ain't gonna miss, and it's two and two. It's a good fastball from Rich Dodson. That's little change speeds, aren't you? Well, as Carney Lonsford said before, what he does, he throw you a lot of off-speed pitches, and then when he throws the fastball, obviously it seems to be that much faster than it was, really is. See how Canseco spread out? He used to spread out even more than that, Joe. Believe it or not, that misses, and the count now goes full of three and two. What they wanted was some kind of a reference for him. So when he did go into a slump, they could figure out what he was doing differently when they had videotaping. But he was changing his stance so often they'd had no reference point. 3 2 pitch, all strike three. And so the outstanding defensive play by Claudel Washington cutting down Lansford to third, and we have no score after one. Waddell Washington, after that brilliant play, here it is again, the catch. He nailed Carney Lansford, tagging up from second, going to third. The throw was there in plenty of time. Canseco was up with the plate, nobody on. He eventually was called out on strikes, and we have no score after one inning, as Waddell congratulated as he returned to the Yankee dugout. This guy didn't get a lot of credit, Washington. One of those guys who could probably play regularly in a lot of ball clubs. This year's seen a little more action as leading things off now is Jack Clark. One of the strong points of the New York Yankees is their outfield play, so he doesn't really have a spot. Jack Clark, nine home runs, 29 RBI. Call strike, and the count goes to one and one. Clark missed the first 11 games of the season. He was hurt in spring training, rounding first base after hitting a home run. He tore the tendon in his calf. Wing, and it's now one and two. Something menacing about Clark, isn't it? He does everything with such authority. The reason he's menacing is because he never takes a soft swing. Every swing is like it's no strikes on him. He's going for the downs every swing. Understand the radar gun. Pick that fastball up at 89 mile an hour. That misses. The count goes to two and two. With Jack Clark, you can't tell if it was a two-strike swing or one strike. He is trying to hit the ball hard each and every swing. This guy, of course, PHing after playing those 11 years of the National League. Welch's well, pitch, light foul, wicked shot back into the stand for the count goes to two and two. Now these two faced each other, Bob Welch and Clark Allott. Welch last year, of course, pitching for the Dodgers, won 15 games. <laughs> That's interesting. Well, Jack remembers getting some home runs off of Bob Welch, but he doesn't think he's been very consistent as a hitter against Bob. 2-2 pitch, grounded to short. White will come up with it. McGuire, and there's a fine play by White. A long throw, and he's able to nail Jack Clark, and there's one down. That's one of the things that White has been able to do so well this year, go into the hole and make a strong throw. He gets rid of the ball pretty quickly, too. He's got a strong arm. As you see, the ball gets past Lansford. He goes into the hole, sets himself, and fires a strike. And you see Jack Clark hustling all the way. He's out by half a step. White. Great ability, first round draft pick for this ball club. Clark will sit down and wait another opportunity as Palarulo now comes up. 
The third sacker hitting a lot better. He went through an 0 for 17 streak and now 7 of 15 cents raised the average. And he looked at a call strike two. That's the first change up or off speed pitch that Bob Welch has thrown. His curveball is pretty hard. He's thrown a couple of curveballs to go with his fastball, but that was the first changeup. Alaruba, who has improved defensively at third base for these Yankees, and the left-handed batter will back out of there. You know, for a guy that doesn't hit average-wise very well, he really drives in a lot of runs. Well, he's produced runs with the base hits because he hits better with men in scoring position, obviously. Foul tip, but he hangs on. Hassey does, and there's two away. That's the first strikeout the now for Welch, and that'll bring Dave up Dave Winfield. Right here. here again, he's saving his off-speed pitches for Palarulo, and here he goes with another breaking ball down, and Mike way out in front. Here is a guy that's just having a superb year. Bob Welch now facing Dave Winfield. Winfield, second in batting average, not just in the American League, but in the Major League. Leading in RBIs with 44. He had a home run yesterday. What has he done this year, Joe? <laughs> well, first pitch popped up behind the plate. Hassey coming back. He may have room. He does. And so Bob Welch, another three up and three down inning. Welch off very effectively for these days. The A's with the best record in baseball. Their third consecutive sellout. And Hassey has been a big addition to this Oakland club. The A's playing very, very well. Bottom of the second inning, Gary Bender, Joe Morgan, as Dave Parker will lead things off. Then Mark McGuire and Ron Hassey. That last play where Winfield popped it up behind the plate again shows Joe Morgan how much foul territory there is here in the Oakland Coliseum. Well, I think the reason for that is this was a football stadium as well. It's an all-purpose stadium, so you need the grass for football, but it also takes a lot of it bats away from hitters. Dave Parker, he's been hot. He's hit safely in 13 of his last 14 games, hitting 283 at game time. The Cobra starts him outside for ball one. Parker's batted second numerous times. In fact, when they made that eastern swing, he had a home run batting in the second position. Straight away center field in Fenway, and also in Yankee Stadium. Swinging strike, and the count goes to one and one. You know, earlier in the ball game, we were talking about, well, you can see the foul territory here, but we were talking about the addition of Bob Welch and all these things to the pitching staff. Don Baylor and Dave Parker add stability to the A's. They bring stability in the fact that they've all been on pennant contenders. They've been in World Series, and they understand what it takes to win, and they can settle some of these young players down. That's one of the reasons they brought Dave Parker here, along with the fact that he can drive in runs and hit the ball out of the ballpark. One and two on Dave. He's a very vocal guy. I know Tony LaRusso telling me that he kind of keeps everybody loose. Right. And you need that, especially if you go down the stretch in a pennant race that's very close and you have a lot of young players on the team. Put that one under the armpits and the count evens to two. Two balls, two strikes. Bottom of the second inning, no score. Hudson, rounded foul, and the count stays at two and two. Unlike a lot of hitters who come from the National League to the American League, Dave was not really having a lot of problems with the off-speed pitches. He was having problems with the ball inside because I think he was looking for the breaking ball and they were busting him inside and he could not get the bat out. Now he's starting to make that adjustment and he's starting to swing the bat very well. In fact, he'd swing a lot of those first pitches just to avoid that. Right. 2-2 two -two and it's high and the count's full now. Three balls, two strikes. Parker then gets out of the box, looks down to the third base coach, Jim LaFever. This is where Rich Dotson, to me, is at his toughest because he can throw the change up over the plate any particular time. Up the middle. Santana's over. Rafael Santana makes a five play off to Gary Ward, and the leadoff man is a race here in the bottom of the second. Saturday on ABC Sports, we'll begin with a professional bowlers tour. It's the Showboat PBA Doubles Classic, live except on the West Coast. And then ABC's Wide World of Sports presents a figure skating spectacular. Brian Boitano, Katarina Vett, Debbie Thomas, the more take to the ice in the night of Olympic champions, plus over 8,000 women compete in the mini marathon from New York City featuring Joan Benoit Samuelson. Mark McGuire has one fair ball down the left field line. He'll hold up as coming in with the relay very quickly on that play. The left fielder, Henderson. He holds him to a single. That ball just inside the foul line. As you see here, Mark McGuire gets out in front and he hammers this ball down the third baseline. 
but you're going to see a great play by left fielder Ricky Henderson. That is normally a double, but Ricky Henderson gets to the line very quickly and holds Mark McGuire to a single. You see Mike Tagliaruro swing it, diving for it, but he doesn't have a chance to come up with it. So McGuire on with one down, and that brings up Ron Hassey. There's Ricky. Ricky, with that left hand, probably helped him a little bit that time getting to the line. Well, it does, and he's also very quick getting to the line here. He knows the stadium very well. He's played out there for a lot of years, so he knows how to play that left field carom. Well, in 82, he set that stolen base record playing for the A's, 130 thefts. Hassey has been a welcome addition to this ball club. He's rejuvenated those creaky knees and has hit very well for this ball club. And with the injury to Steinbach, I don't know where they'd be without him. Well, he's been their most valuable player to this point of the season because of the injury to Steinbach. He's come in and the thing that's impressed me the most about him is hitting the ball where it's hit. They throw him away, he hits the ball to the left field. They get it inside and he jerks it. That pitch misses and the no, oh, that's over for a call strike, and it's one and one to Hassey. McGuire at first. Ward not holding on. As far as stolen bases is concerned, it's all Canseco and Lansford. Canseco third with 17. Lansford with eight. McGuire taking his lead away at first. One down, one one. On Hassey, pitch out. He wasn't going. It's interesting. They thought they were going to send him. Well, I think they were looking for a hit and run rather than a, a straight steal from Mark McGuire. One of the things about Hassey is that Billy Martin really would like to have him on his ball club. He says every time he leaves, they get rid of Hassey. And he goes someplace else and does a good job. Well, they also got rid of Rick Cerrone, who's doing a pretty good job for the Red Sox. Light foul, left field line. Two balls, two strikes. Hassey after the game. A light both these knees down, as well as his right shoulder, which he's been having some problems with. He's also been having problems with Rick Stott from there. <laughs> a 115 batting average. That's not very good. Two balls, two strikes. One out. McGuire takes his lead at first again. Ward is not holding him on. Now to foul. He's getting some pretty good cuts to Dotson. Dotson is really deceptive in that a lot of these pitches look like they're fastballs but they're really change up and they're just he's just taking enough off to get the hitters out in front and it looks like they're having good swings but really they're out in front of the pitch that's far he's given up two hits one to Lansford who was cut down at third McGuire at first with the second hit of the game Assey 2-2 two -two count and that will go through the hole in the left field for a base hit McGuire will make the turn at second and hang on and we have two men on with one down, and that's going to bring up Dave Henderson. And that's what Ron Hassey has been doing all year. He's been hitting very well with two strikes. He goes the other way when he gets in trouble. Well, he had 18 RBIs in the last 20 games, that time moving the runner over. And here is Henderson. What a surprise he has been, both offensively and defensively. Look at those numbers. 319, five home runs, 20 RBIs strong arm and he'll run the ball down in center field well he's done a good job as you say all the way around but I think the most pleasant surprise has been his hitting I think they knew he could catch the ball in center field but he's done very very well hitting in the fifth and sixth spots in the lineup so two hits in the inning McGuire leads off the second Hassey at first Dots it on the way with a pitch and it's a ball one and oh Shows you how he's delivered in the clutch. This guy, of course, is the starting center fielder for the Red Sox, and then they made room for Ellis Burke, and he went on to the Giants, and there's the call strike, and it's one and one. So to get a guy like Henderson is quite a bonus. And most people will always remember the home run he hit in the League Championship Series that got the Red Sox into the World Series. Now to foul, third base side. That was game five when he hit that home run, and he went on to hit about 400 in the World Series. Started out with the Seattle Mariners, came to the Red Sox in that trade with Spike Owen. Of course, it's now the regular shortstop for Boston. When you watch Rich Dotson, you go back to the things that Carney Lansford said about him at the beginning of the show, and that is he mixes his pitches well. One slow one, one fast one, one slow one. Good cut, and the count stays a one and two. And he got away with a mistake there. He hung the curveball, and Dave Henderson had a good cut at it, but just fouled it back. Tony La Russa, of course, as you look at Tony, knows Dotson very well because Dotson pitched for him when Tony was the skipper for the White Sox 
when they won the American League West in 83. That was when Dotson won 22 games. Says he's got a great heart. He'll battle you. Right now, he's in a battle. Two runners on. And now, Skinner calls time. He'll go to the mound. But I think Dotson feels that he has Dave Henderson set up for one pitch. And I think that that may not be the pitch that they went over in the scouting report. And that's why Billy Martin is coming out. What happens is you go over a hitter in your meetings and you say, well, I want to get this guy out. I don't want you to throw him a fastball with men in scoring position. Or I don't want you to throw him a curveball, whatever the pitch may be. But a pitcher gets on the mound. He feels like I can get the guy out with this pitch here. And the catcher's only doing what he was told by the manager. And so they have this confrontation. And then the manager comes out and decides and says, hey, throw what I told you. And that's, it's that simple. 60-year-old Billy Martin, who grew up in the Oakland area, the Berkeley, California area, retreats to the dugout. One and two now to Henderson. How back. He is battling Dotson, and likewise, Dotson is battling him. That was an excellent pitch from Dotson. It was a changeup, low and away. And there wasn't much that Henderson could do with it other than foul it back. So the count stays one ball, two strikes, one out. Runners at first and second. No score, the bottom of the second inning. Looking back, Dotson drives McGuire back into second. They're not holding the runner at first. Hassey, who does not run well at all. McGuire runs pretty well for a big man. Henderson takes another cut and fouls the back. So the count stays one ball, two strikes. This Oakland team went back on that eastern swing. They won the first game against the Yankees behind Bob Welch, then lost two of them. One of them was to John Candelario, who was just absolutely <laughs> brilliant. No chance that day. I think Dave Henderson is causing a lot of confusion to the Yankees here. <laughs> it's a four straight foul ball he's had. One, two, pitch. High ball, right center field. Washington hustling over. Claudel makes the catch. The runners will have to hold, and there's two down. That was a high fastball, and he got in a little bit on Dave Henderson's hand, and he wasn't able to drive the ball. Gallego will come up. Mike Gallego, who was just scintillating yesterday. He made an unbelievable catch of a little blooper hit into short right field. Also smacked a home run Friday in that series with the Red Sox. We have Gag playing second base for Oakland and Pag playing third base for the New York Yankees. A lot of nicknames. That's it now with two down. That's going to go to the backstop. The runners will advance. McGuire to third. Hassey goes to second. Let's look at this one again to see what happened on this between Skinner and Dotson. That's, That's a breaking a ball. Pitch. Yes, a curve ball that bounces. Skinner does all he can. He tries to jump over in front of it, get his body in front, but the ball bounced away from him. That's a true Major League Wild pitch. So one ball, no strikes. Gallego. White is on deck for the A's. McGuire with his lead at third. Fly ball, right field, going back towards the stands. Ward giving chase, but no play. Again, there's so much <laughs> room over there, Joe. You just can't give up on it. It was ball. like he was running for five minutes. I mean, and he still had a shot at it. Ward has pretty good speed. He can play the outfield, of course, as well as first base. But could not get to that one. And the count one and one. Diego played at UCLA. Pesky hitter. Very good defensive player. He and Glenn Hubbard been sharing second base. One one high, and the count goes to two and one. So Dotson in somewhat of a jam. McGuire at third, Hassey at second. Two down, bottom of the second, no score. This is where the toughness that LaRusso was talking about with Dotson comes in. Right, and it's two and two. It's not very tough to pitch if you don't get anyone on base. But when you get guys in scoring position, can you make quality pitches? That's what separates the good pitchers from the average pitcher. So Dotson, the 29-year-old right-hander now, the 2-2 two -two count. Fly ball, center field. Washington going back, still going back, and he makes the catch, and Dobson's out of the inning. So the A's are able to get two base hits, but not able to score. And after two, Dobson and the Yankees deadlock.
this year on ABC. It's called the best line of the week. And it goes to Tim Leary, the right-hander for the Los Angeles Dodgers, who pitched a one-hitter against the Phil. This is a guy that really resurrected his career. He went down to Mexico, found a split-fingered fastball, Joe. And it has made him a very effective pitcher. He's pitching tonight for the Dodgers. And that is our ABC's best line of the week. The only hit was Darren Dalton. And later tonight, we'll have ABC's worst line <laughs> of the week. That dreaded worst line of the week. Gary Ward at the plate. Strike one on him. And this one misses and the count goes to one and one. Gary Ward's always been a good hitter throughout his career. But he's really struggling this year. Gary usually hits the ball left center, right center. And he's been a pretty good hitter. Hitting 200 coming into this game. Two and one on him. Gary had a couple of excellent years for the Rangers. One year he had 28 home runs. He started out fast last year for the Yankees and faded after the All-Star break. Three and one on Ward. Ward will be followed by Rafael Santana and then Joel Skinner, bottom third of the order. Gary, I've seen Bob Welch pitch hundreds of times, I guess. And this is the most I've ever seen him stay on the outside corner. That looks like a broken bat single to right. Sounded funny as Ward now after a 3-1 laces one to right field. And Seiko brings it in and that is the first hit of the game off of Bob Welch. Ward at first, Santana coming up. Welch works very quickly on the mound, wastes little time out there as Santana comes to the plate. Here's a guy that's out of Billy Martin's dug doghouse I should say he made a very critical error at the start of the season that handed the Yankees their first loss to spot his way back and kind of stabilized them defensively well I think Santana's a very good major league shortstop he's played on a championship team with the Mets so he's proven that he can play under the pressure of a pennant race Santana starting shortstop for the Mets the last three years one year he played in 153 games Inside and the count now one and zero. Oh. So Welch with the leadoff man on with a base hit. We're at the top of the third, no score. Santana, the play that really got him in trouble, with Billy's he messed up a sure double play, and it ended up being a six-run inning, and the Yankees lost it. There's a the move to first, and there was something publicly said about Billy. He acted like he didn't care if Santana ever played again, but he's worked his way back into the lineup. Well, I think you have to give Martin credit for staying with the guy and saying, OK, if you prove to me you can play, I'll put you back in the lineup. And he's proved that he can play, and he's back in the lineup on an everyday basis. Right call. One and one now on Santana. And that was the first direct trade ever made between the Yankees and Mets. Mets wanted to make room for Kevin Elster, who's now taken over at shortstop. One ball, one strike, and one on. It's kind of tough to trade inner city like that because if a guy goes over and does a great job, you're going to look bad for a long period of time. you got to give Lou Pinnell a lot of credit. This is one of the guys he's able to pick up along with Candelaria. Dotson. There you see Walter Weiss on the left. He's giving the signal to Mike Gallego on who's covering the bag at second in case Ward tries to steal. Usually in a situation like that, the veteran does that, right? Right. But I guess Wise is, the, is a regular player. He's an everyday player, so he's the one giving the signals now. One ball, one strike. I don't know if that hit the bat or what. Hassey wants to know. He's asking home plate umpire Rich Garcia. I thought I heard something. I don't know if it was a bat or what, but I thought I heard some contact. I don't know. It's hard to tell. Looks like it hit him, doesn't it? Right. But it's, I heard something. Well, Hassey is still arguing with Rich Garcia, who's the crew chief. He's behind the plate. Dale Scott at first. Rick Reed at second. And John Hirschbeck, the third base umpire. We'll take another look at it, but I don't think we're going to be able to tell. The ball does change its trajectory slightly. Well, what we have is a two and one count. Two balls to strike on Santana. Ward at first being held on by McGuire. Throw back again. Ward has not stolen a base this year. Of course, he hasn't played all that much. Tall Ricky Henderson with his 34. 
Powell back. The count even to two and two. Well, one thing it does, though, Joe, even though you don't steal any bases, well, the way they're calling box nowadays, you still got to keep them at least occupied. And Bob Welch really comes close to a box, you know, because he does not always stop completely. Two balls, two strikes, and it's full now. Three and two. Welch. 31 years of age. He played collegiately at Eastern Michigan University where he's an All-American. I think we'll get a chance to see now if he's still a gambler. Yes, he, he was is. going and he fouled it back. You know, Billy Martin is an aggressive manager, so you would feel that he would send Gary Ward in this situation. Three balls, two strikes, put the hit and run on. Joe, that's a good point. In talking to... The A's, they say, what do you think about when you think about Billy Martin? They said he'll try anything. He's always pushing, always looking for an angle and advantage. But I think that also helps keep the players' minds on the game. It keeps them, makes them aggressive. If they know the manager's aggressive, the players will be aggressive. The lob throw to first. Skinner due up next. Santana at the plate, full count. Ward is going, and a pop-up, short right field. Gallego going back on the outfield grass, and again, looking up into the sun, but he's equal to it, and there's one down. The sun is not as tough at second base as it is in right field, because at second base, you're shielded a little bit by the rim of the stadium. In right field, there's no shield. So Joel Skinner will come up. Joel, an excellent defensive backstop. Hit his first home run on this swing. First and 104 at bat. One down and a runner at first. This is inside and the count goes one ball, no strike. When you watch Bob Welp, he throws a hard curveball. And when you watch Rich Dotson, he throws a slow curveball. Rich Dotson uses his speed to be effective. Bob Welch uses the speed on his fastball and the break on his slider or hard curve to be effective. Check of the runner and drives Ward back. Mike Ferraro is the first base coach for the Yankees. Skinner had an ocean, tried to hang up, went around anyway. That may be the best fastball Bob Welch has thrown in this ball game. That one had some giddy up on it. You could hear it clear up here, couldn't you? Skinner, whose daddy was Bob Skinner. Quite a player himself and manager in the major league. That was a 90 mile an hour fastball that Welch threw. Welch taking his time. McGuire holding Ward at first. One down. Swing and a miss, and the count goes to one and two. And he just challenged Skinner on the last two. It's 90 again on that uh, radar gun. And Bob Welch has such a good fastball that he can challenge even the best hitters in the Yankee lineup. But he has to get the proper location. He can throw the high fastball. It's going to be tough for them to catch up with it. But if he throws that fastball in the middle of the plate to some of the big sluggers, they can catch it. One and two pitch. Struck him out. Second strikeout of the ball game. That'll bring the top of the order up and Ricky Henderson. Who they call the ball. Wait a minute, they're calling a box? Yeah, they call the box. Well, Joe, this is your department. Well, I think second base umpire Rick Reed called it. That's 11 box now on Welch this year. At second on the team, Dave Stewart has 12. So instead of a strikeout, now down at second base is Ward. Well, as I said about... Welch. Welch is in a hurry. He likes to pitch fast, and he goes to the plate very quickly. And sometimes he does not stop completely. That wasn't real bad there. Yeah, well, I tell you, that's the reason I'm giving you that department on the box this yeah. year. I'll let you call him. My ball, right field. Canseco got a late strut, jump on the ball, and that ball's up against the wall. Ward had to hold up, and he's going to have to hold up a third. He didn't know if that ball was going to be caught. Canseco, I don't know if he had lost it for a while or not, but he did not get a jump on that ball. 
Bounced up with the base of the wall, and now runners at second and third, and there's only one out. Well, what happened really was Ken Seiko plays very shallow, and he has a long way to go, and the ball is carrying very well. And as you see, the ball hits the base of the wall. I think it was more that he was playing shallow than that actually the sun bothered him. Well, what a big difference that ball makes. Instead of striking out Skinner, he had Ward at second. Skinner now doubles. Ward's at third, and now the top of the order in Ricky Henderson. But you have to point out that Ward should have scored on that ball. It was a bad base running. You have to be a little over halfway, especially with one out. You're not really concerned about tagging up. He should have been halfway, and when that ball went over Ken Seiko's head, he would have been able to score easily. Third base coach Fleet Boyer down there talking to Ward, who leads off Skinner at second. Henderson, who grounded out the first time, calls strike to Ricky. Dave are playing the infield back, so they're going to concede the run if Ricky hits it on the ground to one of the infielders. But Carney Lance for the third will have a play at the plate if he has the charges. But everyone else on the infield is way back. Oh, and one pitch. Foul back. You know, it's amazing of all the box we've had this year, Joe. On May 24th, last Tuesday, the entire major league went without one box. That may be the only day <laughs> that that happens this year. <laughs> I think Welch would like to have had that happen right here. Really pitching now in a jam. One out, two on. 0-2 count now to Henderson. And lines the second baseman, Gallego. The runners get back in a hurry. Well, that's as good as a strikeout. Well, it turns out that way. It was a good piece of hitting by Ricky Henderson. Actually, there was a breaking ball down the way, and he went the other way with it, but he didn't quite get it high He's enough. You'll see a good pitch by Bob Welch here. Breaking ball down and away, and Ricky Henderson does what you're supposed to do with it. Hits it to the opposite field, but it's right at the second base on Gallego. Gallego's had a great series, hasn't he? He's been in the right place seemingly all the time. He's a pretty good player. I think he has not had the opportunity in the major leagues to show how good he can actually be. He plays... You know, he's never played on a regular basis. So now, Meacham comes up with two down. Still the runners at second and third. Meacham the first time, slide out to right. They cut. This is where Randolph, you'd love to have him in the batting order. Well, really, Randolph has proved over his career that he's a good clutch hitter. But I think you have here, you have a guy like Meacham, you have Skinner, and maybe Santana. And I believe that Welch figures he can just throw the ball by those three guys in the Yankee lineup. Right two. Well, top of the mitt now. Throwing hard, trying to get out of this jam. Well, the A's had two hits back in the second inning. They did not score, and now the Yankees with two hits, and they still have anybody home. And if the Yankees do not score, Gary Ward's going to be a, a goat here, so to speak. You're not going to let him forget that, are you? They got him on a called third strike. What a job pitching out of the jam. Well, strands the runner at second.